let me put into perspective how much I really, really feel about this, y'all. Let me make sure I look into okay. the camera and say this to all of y'all right now while y'all looking at me. If I were Aaron Rodgers, I would have walked off the field at the NFC Championship game. I would have walked into the locker room. I would have shook my teammates' hands. And I would have said goodbye. And I've never, I never would have spoken to the Green Bay Packers again if I could pull that off. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. This is Aaron Rodgers. When, when you took the ball, th that was the final straw. Now, yeah. I've said it on many occasions. When you go up to this, when you take the ball out of this man's hands and give it, Tom Brady's on the other sideline. And you say, Tom Brady, all you need is a first down, one or two first downs. That's all you need. You don't need a field goal. You don't need a touchdown. You don't even need to drive down the field. All you need is two first downs, and you seal the deal unless you keep the ball in Aaron Rodgers' hands and you decide to take that position, to take the ball out of Aaron Rodgers' hands. I'm done with you. I'm absolutely done with you if, if I'm Aaron Rodgers and I'm thinking about Matt LaFleur. That's the reality of the situation. And then Matt LaFleur confessed and acknowledged. He never really discussed it. With Aaron Rodgers, Aaron Rodgers was operating thinking he had four chances to get into the end zone. He never thought for one second that the ball would be taken out of his hands after third down. That's what they did. It's an unforgivable, <clears throat> unconscionable decision that happened. But also was a, what is also unconscionable? Years earlier, I'm not asking y'all. I'm not speculating. I'm telling you what I know. Y'all figure out how. Aaron Rodgers goes into management before Matt LaFleur ever became the coach and was making suggestions about what he wanted to happen. And they essentially told him to get the hell out, go out there and play. We make the decisions up here. You ain't got anything to do with this. They have disrespected this man. They have underappreciated this man. They have thrown him to the wolves while saddling him with the responsibility of keeping this franchise relevant. They have not appreciated him by any stretch of the imagination. They have taken him for granted. And then, as Dan Orlovsky tweeted, the last 10 picks or so, nine of them were defensive players over the last 10 years in the first round, and the one offensive player you drafted was his replacement. Um, it's just disrespectful. As far as I'm concerned, he should tell them to kick rocks. If I was him, I wouldn't even return their calls. I wouldn't show up to training camp. I'd host Jeopardy. I'd do anything but play for the Green Bay Packers. He shouldn't even look at them, let alone play for them. Oh, I'd love to disagree with you, but I can't. Um, this is a debate show, but there's no debate here. The Packers are, have done the following. And Dan Orlovsky's tweet was great. Defense, 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 defense. Trade up for his replacement defense. What are they, you know? The issue is this. They were smart in a way, the Packers, if you take the human element out of it. They were smart because they go, okay, we have an all-world quarterback. Until Patrick Mahomes came along, there was never anything like Aaron Rodgers. So let's take advantage of that. We don't need to worry about the offense as much. He's got that. We can focus on the defense. And every year, we can roll into the season as among the Super Bowl favorites and with a well-balanced team a lot of years. And that's not... Stupid. That's smart, actually, right? Take advantage of in a, in a salary cap league, a hard cap league, where everyone's dealing with the same exact resource, identical resources. What do you do? How do you get an advantage? Well, we have a big advantage at the most important position. Let's now funnel resources toward other positions. That's good in theory. That's good if you're dealing with computers or robots or, or some abstract theory. But in reality, when you're dealing with human beings, you're just kind of steamrolling them. So dr trading up to draft his replacement without consulting him, the Packers are acting as though these are the old days. They're not. All the rules changes in the NFL that have favored the quarterbacks. You can't breathe on the quarterback. Stephen A., I remember when the Patriots and the Chiefs knew they may have to play in the AFC championship game, Patrick Mahomes' first year as starter, and they wound up playing in that game. There was a, a game in Kansas City where the linebacker, had Tom Brady wrapped up, and because he didn't want a roughing the passer penalty, he didn't know what was going on with Brady, what, what if he got rid of the ball? He let go, and Brady literally walked into the end zone with those kind of stakes because that's how the quarterback is taken care of. So once you do that, and you've elevated the importance of the offense and of the quarterback, what we've seen in the modern NFL, our quarterbacks are now like NBA superstars just about. They're calling shots. 
They're, they're, they have outsized importance. The Packers are acting as though they're still operating in the 60s. You know, shut up, be grateful, and go do your job. It ain't that anymore. It's not, you know, Bart Starr or even Brett Favre era wow. we're talking about. It's a new era, and they blew it. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.